I think part of the value of institutions like the Community Law Centre is that they've really established themselves as leading institutions with particular expertise on certain specific issues and areas of rights. And we, you know, it's widely respected for that. And we see in the case law that the Community Law Centre has been involved in, the courts have repeatedly recognised the extreme importance of uh, their intervention and I think their skill in, in, in the areas that they work in. And my sense is that there's certain things that the organisation does very well, and it's important that that trend continues and that, that, that the niche it has established for itself in those areas actually do continue. And part of what that means is the, a continuation of the very valuable um, uh, research and writings into, I think, very difficult areas of law that, the, that we see coming from the Community Law Centre on a regular basis. I think that's very important. I think it's important that, that uh, those writings don't remain within academic journals and conferences of academic institutions alone, but we see how it actually filters down into other work and we've again seen the involvement of um, or the impact of it in relation to uh, legislative amendments, legislative uh, interventions, policy interventions in respect of uh, litigation overall. Oh, it was such an interesting matter. It was one of the first socio-economic rights cases to have been litigated to the Constitutional Court. And it was really around interrogating key questions as to what these rights actually meant. Well, in that context, what was the right of access to adequate housing? What were the obligations that they imposed on the state? What was the relevant of certain concepts that had been used in international uh, jurisprudence, such as um, minimum core obligations, etc. And so it was those kinds of issues that the Community Law Centre became involved in at the time of the Grootboom decision. And uh, you may be aware, my colleague Sandy Liebenberg was there at the time, and she played, I think, a, a very valuable role in terms of um, identifying and trying to, to uh, perhaps uh, manage the issues that were raised in that case. So yeah, I think more than anything else with Community Law Centre, it was one of the first cases where we started to interrogate what the content of this new animal of socio-economic rights really meant. And really the debates at that time were around the legislative uh, uh, measures that would be adopted in order to ensure compliance with a range of constitutional rights. It was around lobbying and advocacy in relation to legislation, in relation to policy. Um, key pieces of, I think, um, post-apartheid legislation were adopted during my time at the Community Law Centre and that included the equality legislation, um, the access to information legislation, PAJA, the administrative justice legislation. And my recollection, I have a very, very clear, I think, recollection of the very late nights. It's with members of the Community Law Centre sitting in Parliament and trying very hard to lobby for particular provisions to go into legislation and challenging and asking certain questions around what would be the import of other provisions in legislation. Yeah, what can I say? It fills me with a great sense of pride to have historically been involved in the organisation, to have seen it grow and to have seen its very tangible impact on um, where South Africa's constitutional democracy ha is going and to see, I think, uh, perhaps quite excitingly, the hope for where it as an institution is going to go.